Harper of the Bolton, Fleet, look out of the Majestic, Harold Bride, wireless operator with the Marconi International Marine Gridded Telegraphy and Signal Communications Company Limited.
nothing to spy things by. No wave, no swell, no line where sea meets sky. There's not much wind, is there? No, sir. It's a, a flat car. And we go sailing, sailing on the west wood on the sight. We go sailing Dear Mother of God! What is it, Mr. Fleet? What can you see? Ice fog! Right ahead! Thank you. There's a light tower, hard as starboard! Hard as starboard! The helm's hard over, sir! Engines, full of stern! Full of stern, sir! The bow's reacting, Mr. Murdoch! Two degrees to port! The distance... Mr. Fleet! A quarter mile! Maybe a little less! Nine degrees! Ten! Eleven! A full point! Tar! Jesus, Mary and Joseph! Look at the size of it! It's like the rock of bloody Gibraltar! It's going to pass a starboard! It's all right! I think we're gonna miss it! but I don't suppose it's anything serious. Mr. Edges, is something wrong? I don't think so, madam. Just following orders. Wake up! Wake up! We graced it below the water line on the starboard side. How bad is it then? I don't know yet. Mr. Bell! Send us report. Aye, aye, sir. The exact time of contact was 11.40 p.m. One of us should enter it into the log. And we've got nothing to worry about, have we? Report, Mr. Murdoch. Mr. Murdoch? We're stuck an iceberg, sir, on the starboard side. We don't know yet the extent of the damage, but I've taken the liberty of rousing the passengers. I'm on the on deck, wearing their life preservers. At the very least, they could use a drill. We've never had one, have we? Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Grateful if you would all make your way to the Grand Salon, and please dress warmly. We're taking water in boiler rooms four, five, and six. In six, the water is already up to their knees. Close the watertight doors and see that the pumps are activated. Then, rouse the carpenter and have him sound the ship. It's all done, sir. Position, Mr. Murdoch. In the meantime, Captain, I see no reason to alarm the passengers. There is a series of small gashes below the waterline, stretching 300 feet along our starboard side. There's water in the forepeak, in numbers one, two, and three holds, in the mail room, and in three of the boiler rooms. In all, six of our 16 compartments have been breached. That's all right. You assured us those compartments are watertight. She was designed to stay afloat with any three flooded, possibly four, certainly not six. Andrews, what are you saying? Titanic is sinking, Mr. Ismay. Nonsense! God himself couldn't sink this ship. I assure you he can. How long has she got, Mr. Andrews? An hour and a half, Captain. What? To the most. <laughs> Appreciated if you were all wearing your life preservers. Mr. Etches! Down here, Mr. Etches! I'll be right with you, sir. Please, Mr. Etches! What the devil is going on? Tell me straight, man! 
Are we in any danger? Uh, danger, Mr. Strauss. On this ship? Mrs. Astor, please, your life belt. Mr. Guggenheim, please put it on now. Captain's all. on the number of boats. Evidently, 20 boats was enough to satisfy the line. We need 54 to save every man, woman, and child. 54! But the line felt that anything over 20 would have taken away too much deck space from first class. And that is why well over half of us are going to die. Not if a ship arrives. Do you know of one? I'm on my way to find out. Captain! All first and second class passengers are proceeding to the boat deck as instructed. All third class are locked below the well deck awaiting instructions. Captain, I don't think the passengers or the crew fully comprehend their predicament yet. You'll have to tell them, of course. To tell them what, Mr. Andrews? That more than 1,200 of them are already dead? Oh, I think not, sir. There will be general panic. They will kill each other in order to survive. Awaiting instructions, sir. What? Yeah, yeah, I, I want you up top in charge of loading the boats, women and children first. But, sir, the third class, they're all locked below. That is not your concern, Mr. Lighthaller. Carry on. Yes, sir. Are you taking it upon yourself to decide who lives and who dies? 